Yo, what up? It's your boy Bryson Tiller. Check me out on the Bootleg Kev Podcast. It's the Bootleg Kev Show special guest. I've interviewed him before, but never on camera. By the way, shout out to Bryson Tiller. He's in the building, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The legend. Okay, I got to say, man, um, why are you doing stuff on camera now? Because before you were not doing camera stuff. Like, I feel like it was kind of like when you first came out, like the Trap Soul days, you kind of were keeping a mysterious profile. Yeah. Like, I, was, I remember I interviewed you on the bus, but it was like no cameras. And that was kind of like the thing where it's like, yo, we, we hear the interviews, like, but Bryson, you're kind of very like, you kind of, you were, you're still, you're a pretty low key dude in general, right? Yeah. No, I was just new to it. I didn't want to, you know, be all over the internet. You know what I mean? And it was just like, a thing for me, I just was just very new to everything. So I was just kind of like trying to take my time and not just be rushed into it, you know? That's fair. Do you feel like um, you're kind of like the music industry is a very finicky business? It's kind of like even just, just the entertainment industry in general, you kind of splash onto the scene in such a meteoric way and so fast. Um, was it like hard to adjust to it in such a quick way? You think that that's... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot to adjust to. Like, it was like a, I always tell. Who do I give this analogy to? But I say it all the time. It's like taking a a lion that was raised in inside the house and then just putting him in the jungle. You know what I'm saying? For the right. first time, it's just like he's still a lion, but you know, it's just like weird out here. You know? Yeah. Like, what was going on? A hundred percent, man. A hunt for food. Like, yeah, nah, for sure. I think like um, I think I think back to like when I first met you. I think um. I think that was when did Trap Soul come out? Twenty fifteen or fourteen? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, man. By the way, those Nike dad hats, man, they owe you a check for those. Man. Nike. You Pun intended, those, by the way. You had those Nike dad hats popping. Yeah, it was crazy. That was wild. Did you notice like when you were wearing that hat, like everyone started wearing the Nike, like just the vintage like Nike, almost like the Tiger Woods hat kind of low key, you know? It took a while for me to to realize and then I started noticing. Yeah. Yeah, everybody that everybody's wearing the dad hat. You definitely, you were, yeah, you were. I would say you're kind of the originator of dad hats in hip hop, Loki. Yeah, I would, I would say I definitely am. You are a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Let's own. Uh, hey, round of applause, everybody in here, my guy. <laughs> we are wearing dad hats because of Penn Griffey. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man. Uh, what a time, though, man. I, I do feel like you know we got to give you your flowers for being somebody who really kind of revolutionized the genre and kind of created your own genre within R and B. Um, and I feel like nowadays we really hear your influence on music in general. Um, do you feel like uh, maybe you don't get enough flowers in terms of just kind of bringing a new genre into, I guess a subgenre of music into R&B? Hmm. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people say Trap Soul, and then, but, the, but don't mention my name. You right. know what I'm saying? Or I've seen people talk about Kentucky and don't mention my name. Which so, is crazy. It's nuts. Well, that's crazy. That is wild, right? Yeah, yeah. That part Don't ever crazy. do it again. Don't let it happen again, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, nah, but it's all good, though. It's all love. Yeah, now that, uh, obviously, Kentucky's obviously a thing now, but before, when you came out, it was not a thing. It was not. Yeah. I and mean, we had people from, you know. The have, Nappy Roots. Nappy Roots, player, static major. Uh, ah, yeah. You know? Um, but I just mean in terms of, like, being on the forefront, like, you were, like, a, like, like, like on a star level. There's just you. Yeah. Now you got ESTG, you got Jack Harlow. We do. You and Jack have been locked in for a long time. Um, what is it like now just to see like the home state really kind of, you know, have some real representation um, when for a while you were kind of standing on the mountain by yourself? Man, I was just saying this earlier that it's like, it's a relief. You know, it was all yeah. first it felt like it was all eyes on me. You know, now... I knew that sometime. I knew at some point that like somebody would come up out of the city. Like it's crazy. I low key predicted um, ESTG. Jack came out of nowhere, but um, you know I was like, man, it's, the one, it's only a matter of time before we get like a, a street artist. You know, you know somebody who's like rapping to the streets from Louisville. Um, and then next thing you know, ESTG comes out, and I was just like, yeah, nah, that's the guy. Yeah. Shout out, so uh, shout out to Louisville. Uh, for people who uh, have never been, it is a rabid college town right yeah, yeah i would say yeah the cardinals oh. cardinals basketball pretty much how crazy is the rivalry between the cardinals and the wildcats 
Uh, I would say it's, I would say it's pretty crazy. I, 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 I was never like tuned into the sports like that. I was in the crib all the time, man. Some Batman shit, like just playing video games, and that was pretty much it. Music is what pulled me outside, if anything. Um, but uh, but yeah, as far as the, the the rivalry goes, it would be a thing. Like it's a question, like you know, what I mean, like who who you repping? You know, cards or you know the Wildcats? Wildcats. Yeah. You know, for me, it was the Wildcats for sure. Oh, you were a Kentucky Wildcats guy? Yeah. Yeah. Just like Drake, who's obviously not from there. Yeah, yeah. I watched the team. I uh, watched the year whenever um, John Wall, Eric Bledsoe, Demarcus Cousins. Yeah, was that like, was a I crazy t- team. Yeah, it was nuts. I like watched every game. I like weird shit like that, like anomalies. Like they won every game. I like stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, they had like so many NBA. Pl- I mean, it just there was like a seven or eight year run where just like every every draft there was like a top three guy coming from Kentucky and that year was insane yeah that was a wild year yeah. even like uh, what was the what's the the uh, Enos Cantor I think might have been on uh, that team I think he was on that team as well uh, or what do they call him now For Enos Freedom I don't know hmm. um, talk about well first of all you mentioned video games yep. you uh, during the pandemic uh, we got to see you on Twitch a lot oh yeah you was, was gaming pretty heavy I was gaming heavy yeah was it Apex Legends you were playing? It's still Apex. Apex that's still, Legends, see, yeah. you know, that's like, for people who don't know, man, Apex Legends is kind of like the the, the the stepchild of the the video game world. Because we always hear about Call of Duty, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Modern yeah. Warfare. Everybody's on fucking Modern Warfare. And then you hear about, I mean. It's like the overhyped shit, you know what I mean? It's just like. And then there's like Fortnite, which is GTA, like, there's 2K, and there's COD. And now, if anything, people like mention Fortnite or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But those are like the main games that people know. Like but like Legends. Apex is on the come up on the rise and people don't even realize that like Apex is just a better game. Than you Call you think Duty. it's better than all those? Oh, I wouldn't say all the other games. Um, My like, producer, it's all he fucking does. Then COD? Absolutely. He, play, no, he plays, he plays he Apex. Play Apex? Legends, yeah. Who's your main? Wraith? Okay. Wraith man in the, in the building, man. Shout What's out that to mean? Him. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now nah, she's a, a, a legend that you can select in the game. Oh, okay. So uh, she's so, one of the OG legends. So when you play Apex Legends, you it's not do you build your own character? No, no, you don't. You just select from a, a roster of legends that they have. Yeah. And if anything, you can put their own skin, but they all got their own different abilities. Like my favorite. Who's yours? Mine is Mirage. So oh, basically yeah. like I can like just send a decoy and I have one Bryson Till right here and then I just walk to the bathroom while you're interviewing that Bryson Till. I was about to say, do you kind of wish you had that in real life? I do. Yes, <laughs> man. Like, I don't want to do all this shit, man. Just like, let's send the fucking decoy out there. Yeah. Back I in the day, MF Doom used to do that. You know who MF Doom is? Oh, uh, yeah. So MF Doom, he, because he, he wears a mask. Yep. So he had a guy who was built similar to him that would go out there and p- perform some of his shows oh, wow. under the mask and just lip sync. And I, I think I did that maybe one time with Swan. Because the, there was one point where people couldn't tell us apart. Yeah. Not for a concert. I don't know, he wouldn't survive out there. But, right, 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 right. But right. when it came to like walking to a, to a club or something like that, I think we had to use him as a decoy. But wait, you crazy. said? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. My best friend Swan, like you know, what I mean, he had a uh, he had to go like, wait, yeah, he was my decoy. You had a club walkthrough booked? No, 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 no. It was like I was I had, we had to get out of the club okay. or something. It was just too crazy, so I had to like. So you kind of like yo had the security surround him? Yeah. And then, I thought you were like, yo, my guy pulled up to the club. He got the back end and yeah, he did nah. don't and he got the fuck up out of there. <laughs> that sounds like some Akon bullshit. Yeah. A- well, I mean, <laughs> a- yeah, but you know, Akon's brother really like you, you know, I'm sure in like before the internet, you yeah. know, before like Instagram, I, I could see that. I could yeah. see people pulling that type of shit off. Nowadays, not happening. No, I don't think so. It's, 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 it's a little too, everyone, everything's just so trans, uh, transparent. What up, y'all? We're stopping the interview real quick to tell you about our good friends at MyBookie. We're live in my room right now in Las Vegas. And if you're not in Las Vegas like me and you want to gamble on sports in the easiest, most convenient way, you want to get that money, man. Listen, NFL season, we got college football, we got NBA going stupid right now. All you got to do is sign up right now at MyBookie using the promo code BOOTLEG and they will match your first deposit up to $1,000. That's right. Whatever you deposit up to $1,000, they're going to match that. They're going to give you free money to gamble with. So what the fuck are you doing? Inflation is crazy. Everybody can use some extra money. They're going to give you some free money to play with. If you make your first deposit using that promo code BOOTLEG up to $1,000, they're going to match it. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. This weekend, Cardinals versus Niners, Monday Night Football, Mexico City. I don't like my Cardinals. 
Go heavy on them Niners, all right? That's all I'm. That's my bet for the week, all right? Let me know what you got. Uh, hit me on Instagram and all that, but don't forget to sign up and get this money with me at my bookie, all right? Go to my bookie right now. Stream games, bet on them. You can live bet them. You can do the props, and of course, they got the live casino, all that. My bookie promo code bootleg. Sign up right now, and they're gonna match your money up to a thousand dollars. Let's get back to the interview. What is going on right now? Obviously, you've been you dropped the uh, the, the the weight remix, which by the way. Genius. I'm glad somebody did that. Man, shit. I'm just, the Ying Yang twins don't get enough love, man. If we yeah, just shout out to Ying Yang twins, they, man. They pulled up to the shoot, happy, smiling. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, Super great guys. Just, just in good good spirits, man. And, and just um, classic records. Yeah, exactly, man. And um, yeah, no, that was dope. We, uh, we dropped that song. We were sitting on it for a while, but uh, wanted to just kind of spark and start the album process and kind of shake up anybody's expectations of what of what's to come you know yeah. what I mean instead of putting something out there that's like what people are used to hearing from me you know what I'm saying and we got a lot more records like that too so Dope. and then obviously uh you have the uh this Diddy record that's going crazy which is really a Sir. I mean it's really your record you know what I'm saying shout out to Diddy Diddy's shout executive Diddy. producing a great album I hear right now yeah, yeah. man yeah so yeah. how does that happen does he like do you does that song exist already and then Diddy hears it and it's like yo it existed already. It actually got leaked on um, on YouTube. I sent it to my little brother. He sent it to the wrong people. Next thing you know, it's on YouTube. People are like, yo, your song leaked. And I was pissed about it. I was angry. I didn't talk to my little brother for months. And um, <clears throat> I remember finally I was just like, all right, I'm going to go check. I'm going to go see what's going on, see if people even like this song. And I go on there and I read the comments and everybody's just sharing about sharing the stories about how they need to move on. And I relate to this song so much. And I was like, oh, that's dope. And then um, fast forward again to the future. I'm in L.A. and I get a call from Diddy and he's like, come work on the album. I get out there. I see my song on the song title on the dry erase board. So I was just like, is that my song? And um, he plays the song. Actually, he tells me a similar, shares a similar story, like everything that I was seeing in the comments. So I was like, damn, this is wild. Like, yeah, absolutely. So he just heard the leaked version? Yeah. And just decided to put it on the whiteboard for his album? Yeah. That's just some Diddy shit, right? Hey man, I'm rocking with. It. I would do this. I would do the same thing if I heard something that nobody really heard, and I feel like the world needed to hear. Yeah, and you know, shout out to Diddy for believing in it. Yeah, no, it's a great record. The remix is dope. Um, yeah. you guys did. I, I was at the iHeart Festival when you came out. Oh yeah. Shout out to Diddy too. Like uh, his performance at the iHeart Festival was amazing, but it also made me realize that I'm not the only person who's out of shape. <laughs> not for real. Yo, Diddy had a dude who kept bringing out a cup of water with a straw in between songs. It was amazing. I was like, if I was a fucking famous, if I was Diddy, I would have the same thing. If I'm like performing, I'm like, I need my water cup guy to come out and, and you know, shout out to Diddy. Um, yeah, no, uh, it, it's dope. I, I think, you know, um, with Diddy, like, He's probably him and Khaled. I, I, I'm gonna see what this album sounds like because I feel like he's kind of doing his version of what Khaled's been doing, but he's Diddy, so it's just totally different. And it's R&B. And know? it's R&B, man. He's R&B he lover. R&B ain't dead, or he said it is dead, but he's trying to bring it back. You know, right? Yeah, you I'm think he's dead? I'm glad he said that. You know, I think it's. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying that I agree with him, but I'm just saying I'm glad he said that because I feel like people out there who either agree or disagree are like it created a conversation about the genre however you feel about it right yeah and it uh you know it's just gonna make things better i think you know when yeah. i said hip-hop was dead now look at hip-hop 100 you know? percent. now yeah, it's yeah. the biggest shit so it's like this is true this is true um the, your new album how would you describe it as, uh, just sonically compared to you know some everything of your, else other stuff um <clears throat> sonically i would say uh hmm just very different, man. We just try and I just explore a lot of new worlds, places that I've never really been before. And like, well, maybe some places I tried to go before and I wasn't too comfortable in those spaces. Like, for example, a song like Run Me Dry. Like I had a song called Run Me Dry on one of yeah. my second album. And uh, I wasn't really, com- I was nervous about doing a song like that. Um, now I have a song that's kind of like that. But, um, you know, I'm a lot more confident in that space. And, you know, you can just tell, you can hear it, you can feel it. So... Um, There's a lot of confidence throughout this throughout this album, and uh, yeah. Do you feel like because I feel like Nas went through this with Illmatic, and mm-hmm. Fifty went through it with Get Rich or Die Trying, where like you put out a, an album like Trap Soul, and like people just want another one of those. Yeah, that's the worst, right? And because that happened with Nas, I mean, like if you look back to Nas's uh, second album, it was written. It's a fucking perfect project, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But when it first came out, people were like, 
yo, this ain't Elmatic. What the fuck is this? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Do you feel like, is that a gift, the gift and the curse part of having a project like Trap Soul? And especially, it's your first project. Right. Yeah, which, which is, made it even more. Right. Yeah, crazy. Um, the way I see it now, I'm just like, man, it's it's there for you to, to listen to. Yeah, you I can mean, go Jay, back and listen to it if you yeah, want. Jay -Z yeah, Jay-Z said it best. Like, Nick, Nick can I say... Uh, say, what you, I, say what you want. Niggas want my old shit. Buy my old album. Like, yeah. Simple as that. Like you yeah. want, if you want that, go get it. Tyler Creator said something like that too. He said something along the lines of like, "Yo, go get it from the source. Why get the the you know the reproduced version or whatever? Like you know what I mean? It's pure over here. So just go listen to that. You know what I mean? And if your favorite artist or whoever it is that you supporting ain't putting out anything else like that, then shit, I guess go find another artist to listen to. You know? Yeah, I also think too, like you gotta grow, man. Like at the end of the day, right. like you said, you've seen places that you didn't see before you recorded your first album. So you want to, you've lived a lot of life. You yeah, know what I mean, I have hundred percent. Um, yo, talk to me about your verse on uh, Wild Thoughts, which is one of like it's probably my favorite. Eh, it's top three or four Khaled record for me. It's a fucking smash. Obviously, you and Riri going back and forth. Your verse though is like the verse that like if you're mixing on the air. Like you have to play the like your verse is the verse to play. Really, my verse always gets cut out every time. No, I but that's it. because people are <laughs> the DJs are lazy. The DJs that know, like you got to kind of cut ahead into the record and play the Bryson verse because oh, I feel like your verse is the quotables. Like well, shout out to you, man, for for, for playing. Well, I know a lot of DJs who play. That's the verse no, that I, never, I feel like you got to. You kind of like have the version where actually there's like in DJ pools there's versions of that record where it's just the hook and then your verse and then the hook and then it's you know. For, for for DJs, yeah. Interesting. You're not aware about this about your own verse that it's like a thing. No. Yeah. I'm not classic verse, man. It was uh, it was interesting for sure. I, I thank you, but um, I just wish, I wish it could have went uh differently. But hey, man, it's how could it seven. have gone differently? And it been I just any wish. I, I mean, because uh, I just needed. I wanted to like you know get Rihanna's energy. I didn't get to hear what she did. Well, I heard it through a FaceTime call, but like I wanted to hear it. Yeah. Like, so what was the definition. process of that record? Like it was, was Party Next it? Door who wrote the song. Okay. Party Next. Uh, I went to Khaled's place. We had dinner. Um, it invites me to the studio. I always tell him, "It's like, bro, you don't never have to give me a whole spiel about a song. Like you just play the song and then, like let's go." But he always gives me this whole like, "It's like, yeah, yo, don't let Khaled listen. start selling cars. It's over." Nah, for real. Yeah. So then he played this song, and I was just like, "I'm honestly, bro, you could just." You didn't even have to say nothing. Like, this is obviously a, a smash. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Thank you for even wanting to include me. You said, oh, you want to put who on it? Rihanna? Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank yeah. you. Um, but he wanted, he was like, yo, we need the verse tonight, though. Or something like that. And I was just like, all right. I mean, but ain't she going to have to, ain't we going to have to pitch it up? So, you know what I mean? Rihanna sings in a higher octave. He was like, no, we, we just need tonight. And I was just like, all right, cool. So I, I did the verse. But, you know, when I'm, writing the verse to like that matching parties energy you know what i mean it's kind of hard to like imagine what's going on like i would have just liked to do a little bit more vocals you know what i mean probably would have changed a couple lyrics it came out um, nice man yeah i just thought i was you know a song called wild thoughts i'm gonna just say the wildest shit yeah. that i can think of the yeah. wildest the wildest thoughts you know that's fair yeah and in, in that era it could have been about wild thoughts as well Wild thoughts. Yeah, that was like when everybody was saying the word. Oh thought, yeah, you know what I, mean? I still say that word. Uh, yeah, is that is that still you know thoughts? Maybe not as much, but it's definitely definitely a word. It's in my vocabulary. Shout out to the thoughties, <laughs> the Tatiana Ali's out there. You know what I mean? What up? We got to stop the interview real quick. We're live in Vegas right now. Uh, listen, fellas, if you're watching this and you need a little extra pep in your step. You know what step I'm talking about. I'm talking about that dick step, damn it, all right? If you need some help with that dick of yours, uh, Blue Chew is here to save the day. That's right. Same exact ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, but here's the catch. No awkward doctor's appointments. It comes straight to your door in a chewable form. Very discreet packaging. Very discreet billing. Uh, you don't have to go to a uh, random waiting room while you wait to get your dick pills from the doctor. It's an embarrassing situation. No. With Blue Chew, all you do is go to bluechew.com right now. Sign up with the promo code BOOTLEG. That's the most important part. When you sign up with BOOTLEG at bluechew.com, you get your first month for free. You just got to pay $5 shipping. That's right. You go to Blue Chew. You get the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in that Blue Chew form. Your dick is uh, on an all-time high. I mean, this thing is fucking booming. Uh, and then on the other end, they just dropped their new mint chewable, which has the same active ingredients as Levitra, all right, which is even stronger. So if you really need some help in the dick department, Blue Chew's got you, all right? Go get a free month. 
Fellas, I don't care if you're not even dealing with any dick problems. Maybe you just want to impress somebody you're about to fucking hammer. All right? Go to Blue Chew. Get your first month for free right now, delivered right to your doorstep using that promo code BOOTLEG. Go do that, and let's get back to the interview. What's now? Uh, when are you getting this? Uh, when are we getting the album? Um, Man, I was trying to, you know, we was trying to get it out this year, but uh, with samples and stuff, you know how that goes. Yeah, and it's like, really, if you don't get it out by, like, next Friday, there's no point. Of, I mean, the music industry shuts down. The right. DSP guys are on vacation. It's... It's, it's no really kind of hard to put an album out in December exactly. and get so, like the full impact that you want it to have, you know? So, uh, you know, top top of 20, So February. Something like that. Probably February. Yeah. Something like People that. come back from vacation like January 6th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fe we'll see. So February. We'll see. I'm open to either. All right. February. January, February, March. It'll be February or March. April. I don't know about January. January's also still kind of shaky. Everyone's coming back from vacation. You know how the music industry is. We're, we're letting people behind the curtain a little here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you st are you like for you, man? Like, what is motivating like your creative process? Like, what inspires you in 2022? Is it your son? Is it just like being a fan of other music? Like, what inspires you? Like, when you get into the booth, you have an idea. Like, what is the main inspiration for you musically nowadays? These days, main inspiration for me, man. I, I don't know, man. I'm just so excited to just give people experiences like something that they can like attach to a memory that they have going on in life like that's kind of what i'm really what i really care about right now just giving them one song just like you know if you listen to my album i just want one song for you to just take and just for you to live with you know what i mean for you to be able to like i said attach a certain memories to it mm -hmm. like oh i was at this place or i was with this girl or, you know what i mean that's all i care about right now um i've been listening to a lot of different music that's inspiring me um, Steve Lacey is one of the, one of my favorites. You know the new Drake Twenty One Savage album, dope amazing. Album. I love that album. Yeah, good album. Um, uh, it's a lot of dope stuff that I'm hearing. What's your album of the year? My album of the year? Yeah. It's Give me three of them. How about that? So you don't. I mean, I would probably say Steve Lacey, just because you know I love Melody. Yeah. And um, and then I would say the Drake Twenty One, her Damn. loss for sure. Really? Already? You're gonna put her loss up there that fast? Yeah. You gonna let it marinate a little bit? No, nah, I don't need to. I just heard. I heard it and I just knew. I it's know what it the is. best meme action of the year. That too. Like, it's for so many different reasons. It's a classic. That's the best. My son, who's fucking eight years old, is not listening to the album once, sings that part. 21, yeah. Because yeah. he'd be on TikTok and shit, yeah. and YouTube. And yep. I'm like, bro, how do you know this? That's crazy. And he's like, Drake Zesty, dad. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's crazy. Because <laughs> it's, that, it's that, that video game clip where someone created Drake and yeah, created yeah. 21 Savage and Drake's walking. Yeah, I see that. that shit is hilarious. But the album's classic, though. I love it. No, it's a great album. And I think um, Drake went in, man. That Spin snapped. Bout You record is so hard. Oh, my God. They both snapped. I, I, I prefer this over... I think this is my favorite Drake project since... Uh, if you're reading this? Probably since... If you're reading this, it's too late. That's me, too. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. I always feel like when I listen to a Drake album, I'm always wanting more, but I feel like I listen to this and I'm very, I love 21 Savage. So I just knew, I was like, yo, this is going to be the Drake album I love. I just have it. There's no way him and 21 Savage make some whack shit. It's just not. I was so hype. I was like, me and Swan were in the studio, just like ready for it to drop. As soon as it drop, press play. You got a relationship with Drake? Yeah. How's that? It's cool. Nice guy? Cool guy. He owes me $50,000. 50000 for yeah. what? We were hanging out at Harriet's at, at the bar. I was with Freddie Gibbs, and this was uh, two years ago when the Suns made it to the finals. Shout out to the Phoenix Suns. And Drake bet me $50,000 was the bet uh, whether or not the Suns or the Warriors would make it further that year. This was like mm. maybe three, three fourths of the way through the season. I got witnesses, credible witnesses. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, just fucking no way to get a hold of Drake. You know, I don't have his fucking number. I've DM'd him. Like, hey, what's up with my bread, bro? You know what I mean? Damn. I'm never going to get my money. So when like he, he made that 2K bet on Twitch the other day with 21 Savage, I'm like, good luck ever getting that money. Mm -hmm. I feel like he has a problem gambling too. <laughs> Me and him. I've been seeing him gamble, gamble a lot. lot. Me? No, I don't gamble. No, no, no. no. Yeah, it's smart. No, I don't gamble. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe on Mario Kart or something like that. You gamble on Mario Kart? Or Smash Bros, yeah, I will. Are you excited for Super Nintendo Land at Universal coming? Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. I would rather go to like 
Yeah, I think they're doing one. I think they have one already over in like Tokyo or something like that. That'd be where you'd want to go. That's where I want to go. Because if you go to Tokyo, they actually. I'm not ex- so. To answer your question, no, because actually now that I think about it, because it's going to be so. Everybody's going to be there. So I'll probably have That's to wait. The worst. <laughs> Dude, I Maybe to- I can rent out, rent it out for like one day or something. Yeah, you're rich. Uh, but you get the VIP <laughs> tour, you know? Yeah. I went to Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, you ever been there? No, nah, I never have. So the weekend had his own haunted house. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, like, he fire. was like the main Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights this year was like based around the weekend. That's crazy. And his haunted house was the best one. I oh, expected man. it to be kind of what's scary about the weekend. There's some wild shit going on in there. Damn, I wish I saw It's like being on a fucked up mushroom trip while listening to his album. It was pretty uh, crazy. Damn. You ever do I... mushrooms? Nah. Never? Nah, I can't. Weed has done some crazy things to me. Like, I smoke weed and then, like, I've been in, like, a weird space in my head mental really? I just sometimes I thought I was gonna die like for real so I was like I don't even want to try any other drug that's stronger than so that so you smoked weed and, and um, it I had, think it was like some salvia or some synthetic weed or something one time were you smoking spice from a smoke shop nah it was uh, it, I don't know what was Sativa? going on it was, I, nah nah it, it ain't it ain't that uh, uh, it was something but it had me fo- it really had me just tripping So I, and then I did dabs one time dabs are crazy like music sounded so horrible, I didn't want to hear nothing. Like every time I heard a song, I was just like, "Yo, please turn this off." Like, yeah, it just sounded like dab, nails. Uh, a dab will melt your face off. Yeah, I couldn't stop coughing. The worst shit though is, yeah, yeah, it, it, like it hits you different too. It's crazy. But the worst shit is if you eat too much edibles. Oh yeah, I, I did that one time. I was working at UPS. It was wild. How was UPS? UPS was we always cool. Hear UPS is hiring. Shout out to Biggie. You know how was that for you? Oh, we're, yeah, the U- UPS, seasonal job, I liked, regular job. Was, I was working in part time uh, throughout the year. I worked there for two years. I, I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Um, I like stacking the boxes up. You know what I mean? I was just working in the factory truck, loading the trucks, uh, loading the trucks up, just all the way. You know what I always wonder, <laughs> as somebody who may or may not have put weed in the mail and sent it out, um, do the UPS guys like if? Did you ever find any like packs? Nah, never. But was it like a thing where like maybe like you guys would talk like, hey, if 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 a box opens up and it's some weed, we could just take it? I probably would have. I ain't going to lie. Because that that's a thing, right? If you send like pounds of weed in the mail, allegedly, that if like, if you send it through UPS or FedEx, since it's not the federal government, the drivers will take that shit because yeah. what are you going to do? You're not going to call them and be right, like, oh, exactly. my fucking 10 Money too, I think, right? Money too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've had some some situations like outside that. of ups uh any other crazy jobs you've uh you've had before you were uh pen griffey crazy jobs not really i worked in for a moving company that was like my first time like being in like expensive houses that was really cool nice. getting like a hundred dollar tips and whatnot yeah so that shit's like, inspirational too it was i was just like dang all these houses in kentucky i didn't even know we had this Hell yeah yeah you know? i used to go park in front of houses like i me and my uh you know somebody i used to fuck with we used to drive around the um there's an area in Scottsdale called the Biltmore. We used to just go look at the mansions and shit and be like, one day. Yeah, me and my be- me and Swan used to do that all the time, man. We used yeah. to just do that. And then you get chased out by security. He's like, what are you doing looking at our house? I'm like, I'm just just trying to get inspired, you dick. You it's know not me? for real. Hey, what up, y'all? Bootleg Kev. Got to stop the interview to tell you about our newest sponsor, man. Shout out to the homies at Hardeen Las Vegas. That's right. The number one dispensary in the whole state of Nevada. Let alone in the whole fucking country. So many choices of premium cannabis, ladies and gentlemen. It is like, how can I put this? You walk into it. You go to Hardeen in Las Vegas. When you're on vacation, when you're out there tricking off, whatever you're doing, stop off at Hardeen. Tell them I sent you. Be like, yo, bootleg Kev sent me. They're going to take care of you at Hardeen. When I say selection, I mean selection of the best premium cannabis in the world the best dispensary. There's a reason why Hardeen is world famous. Follow them right now, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Go to their website, HardeenLasVegas.com. That's J-A-R-D-I-N underscore Las Vegas. When you're in Vegas, you have to pull up to Hardeen. Tell them I sent you and get high off your fucking face. I don't even know what that means. How do you get high off of your face? Eh, whatever. Melt your fucking face off with some of that good Hardeen, y'all. Go follow him one more time. That's Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Let's get back to the interview. <laughs> so new album coming in hopefully by February, March, something like April. that. April. Um, any other features coming soon? Uh, man, I, I've been working on trying to get these features done. There's a lot of people that's been like waiting on verse. I can't lie. Um, but I've been trying to get my album done, you know? So. Yeah. 
Priorities. You got to get your shit. I got to. Yeah, I got to get me. I got to get my stuff done because my fans is waiting. So I was gonna say, how does that work for you? Like, if someone hits you for a verse, um, let's say someone sends you a song and it's dog shit. I tell them it's dog shit. You tell them it's dog shit. But what if they're <clears> like, well? Actually, no. I don't tell them it's dog shit. I tell. I, you tell them I plan what I like higher? about it first. Okay. It just depends. Some people are like, "Yo, will you get on this song?" If that's the question, I might just say, "I don't think this is the one." What else you got? You know what I'm saying? But if they say, "Hey, what do you think about this song?" and it, and I think it's dog shit, like I'm gonna give them my feedback. But um, what was, what was the second? I was gonna say, well, like if it's like a dog shit record, right? But they're like double your fee. You still getting on the dog shit? No, no, I'm not doing that. No. that's good. That's that brand that. integrity is important. You yeah, just not anybody can just buy a Bryson Tiller verse, right? Exactly. Anybody out of your hometown that you're a fan of that we'd like to share shine the light on right now? Somebody who's yeah, I mean, with those names we named earlier, Jack. No, no, I mean. Other than that, them. I mean, like up and coming people. Shout out to Mars, really dope singer from Louisville. Um, there's this other kid that my boy Swan showed me called Plat. His name's Platinum, super dope, dope voice. And uh, man, that's this other kid. I forget his name, but uh, my boy just sent him to me recently. But I like his stuff. He be he be around Jack. So, man, I'm sure I'm sure you hear about him at some point. Would uh. You and Jack Harlow ever do a joint like Louisville S Sluggers album? That was so fucking corny. I'm sorry. Nah, maybe man, a joint nah, album. Not at all. We we planned on doing it um, a little while ago, but he caught me in the middle of depression, so like I just wasn't in that mental space um, to even do that. So um, I ended up not going to Atlanta like we originally planned. And um, yeah, how do you deal with depression, man? Because a lot of people they they keep it inside, and then you know they end up turning to unhealthy shit some people like it did you go to therapy did you um for me i, I mean played a lot more video games um but that's what vlad said on twitter that went viral he said what? people who play a certain amount of video games like if you play more than like four hours a day or something he said it's a form of depression mm, what does he know does he play video games i, I don't know i'm just, well, I'm you just know saying what? It, it, it went viral i don't know but so you no. you kind of dived into the video games a lot more um, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Um, I try to read as much as I can, but like, you know, uh, other than that, man, I just try to get off of the fake world, which is like, you know, Instagram and social media, Disconnect period. Disconnect from that shit. Disconnect. You know, there was a point where I didn't have Instagram for like five months or something like that. I was just- Were you happier five. when you didn't have I was IG? super happy, yeah, because I didn't think about it or even care, you know? Um, then Twitter, like I would keep it on a certain device. So if I ever wanted to use it, I had to go get this device, like a laptop actually. And then using my laptop to get on Twitter, you know. Um, so just like little things like that to help me not think about certain stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, I think like when you're in our industry, like it's really easy to kind of like get wrapped up in like comparing yourself to your peers all the time, right? It's yeah. like you open your phone and you like, and, and that somehow that kind of fucks with what you think your self worth is. Yeah, it does that. Yeah, and then like. You know, I can only imagine you, you got this super microphone on Twitter and IG of people leaving comments, tweeting at you, whether it's good or bad. Like, All the time. If you see it, even if you don't think you take it in, subconsciously you take that shit in, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely subconsciously. But uh, I don't even care these days. It's just funny. Like when I see people who just, who just say just the most negative things, like I just, like I'll get messages sometimes, a DM, a dude just going in, going crazy. Like, yo, you fell off so bad. I used to be a fan of you, but not anymore. And I'll just be like, yo, I love you, bro. Well, first of all, you didn't. F I'd like to point no, out. No, no, we, we only have. You only have two albums. Okay, yeah. That's or is it three? It's three. It's three, yeah, it's three now. Three. You dropped we, the third one in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. But like, yo, you, like, listen, man. Yeah. You're fucking. You're Bryson Tiller. Don't forget it, bro. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. No, nah, but that don't, it don't phase me. It used to phase me. Don't get me wrong. It used to phase me a lot. But now I just like, I just let them know that I love them because like, if you're gonna type this message up and take all this time to type this message up, you really actually love me because. Was that? Would you say that you would? Let, you used to like? You used to like really let that shit get to you? Yeah, definitely, definitely got to me. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's I like, like the it. gift. I think you just got to push through that shit, man. Because a lot of the great artists have gone through that. When you got a fucking classic album that kicks kicks off your career, fucking Snoop Dogg, man. That like he put out the Dog Father in I think '96. His first album was Doggy Style. Don't give a fuck about the Dog Father because it wasn't Doggy Style. Yeah. I just think you just gotta just keep dropping, bro. That's it. Just yeah. keep going, cause this. Are you um? Are you penning stuff for other people, or are you just? I'm trying. Of, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely trying. I like doing that. It's easier, cause like just to be able to go in the studio and cut a reference rather than trying to like sit there for. I'm super meticulous, so like right. sit there for hours and like 
correct every vocal. That's that shit's annoying. I yeah, I'm it. sure if you cut a reference, it's like it's like a super rough. So you yeah. don't have to worry. You're just like, hey, this is the idea. It's the idea. You go in here, you make it super magic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What's uh, the last uh, project you helped write on? Last project I helped write on. Um, man, it's been a minute. Chris Brown's album, Royalty. That was the last time I worked on somebody else's stuff. I might be missing somebody, but uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. What would be your advice? Because you're obviously introvert, would you say? Yeah. What would be your advice for somebody who's also an introvert and and has has a problem kind of breaking out of their shell in terms of maybe like wanting to be in the music industry or just wanting to kind of like be in an industry in which it can be a little bit harder being an introvert? I would say, um, <clears throat> you know, just to remember that, like, if you're comfortable, like, you're not you're not growing yeah. at all. So it's just like same shit with the gym. Like, you got to be uncomfortable to like really grow. So like, you want to always try to try to stay just beyond your comfort zone. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If you realize that you're super comfortable, and you're not in the right place. Then like, just try to like go a little bit, take a couple steps further. You know what I mean? There it I would is. Say it. that. Um, before we let you go, give me your Mount Rushmore of R and B music. If somebody just asked me this, so this is gonna be easy. Usher, Chris Brown, The Dream. Ooh, I only do I pick four. Four, four. Okay, and that last person, I'm gonna have to give that to Frank Ocean. Yeah, I thought you were gonna go R. Kelly on us. I'll pre he'd probably be number five. Yeah, he's number one. You know what I'm saying? But we, yeah, you know, but for obvious reasons, you know. It's just, yeah, I would definitely. You know, he, he got he got some gems. I mean, he's R. Kelly, but he's also R. Kelly. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> oh, chill out, <laughs> chill out. I mean, he's the greatest R. and B. artist of my lifetime. He also is a flaming piece of dog shit as a human oh, being. Man. That doesn't mean I don't listen to bump and grind. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do we? You got to separate. Can you separate the art from the artist in life in general? I can. Yeah. I'm yeah. one of the few people that can do that. A lot oh, of people, I can't for sure. A lot of people can't do that, but I'm just like... Bro, I be in my car sometimes bumping like R the album, and my wife be like, what the fuck is wrong? Why are you listening to Half on a Baby? He's talking about a kid. I'm like, because it's R. I, I don't know. I don't think about that shit. I think about when I was 14 and I bought this album. And like, yeah. Shout out. There's a lot of artists these Could days. Could you listen to a Jeffrey Dahmer album <laughs> if it was fire? Nah, 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 because I didn't That's know him right? first. Yeah, I feel you. So like if I would have known like if there was like a story about like Robert Kelly pissing on little girls right and I didn't know he made music they were just like yo uh, this guy named Robert mean. Kelly and they had a Netflix series about him and then and I, then you and, found, then and a 12, lot of people are learning his music through that way and crazy. then Twelve Play leaked yeah I'd be like damn man sucks like you know yeah, I, I probably wouldn't even listen to it. if Jeffrey Dahmer dropped an album like well he's dead now right but if he dropped the album today. Uh, it, it probably would go gold, to be, which is crazy, because <laughs> people are gonna just go listen to Sick. it. But it, if it was if it was great, I, w I wouldn't care. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. Did you watch the show? A little bit of it. I, I just can't get into that type of shit. Yeah. Know. What's the, what, what what shows do you get into? You uh, have to crib a lot of anime. And I don't really watch too much TV to be honest. Like I'm more so like on Twitch, like watching my favorite gamers, just like tight kill shit. Who are your favorite gamers? Nice wig, my boy Daltouche. Um, shout out to Nick Merckx You know, he he made the switch from Call of Duty. We well, still plays COD, but you know, now he's, he's on Apex. On, he on Apex with it. Um, shout out to my boy Noco Puff. Shout out my boy Term K forty seven. So that's um, kind of like your Netflix is like watching dudes game. Yeah, that's tight. I I uh. It sounded weird when you the way you said it though, but yeah. Well, I mean, there's a bar in uh in Burbank. Um, it's called the Guild, I think. And if you go in there, it's like a gamer bar. It's very small. It's like a hole in the wall. Place. Where is it, Burbank? Yeah, it's in Burbank. And they have, um, instead of like, you know, when you go to a sports bar or any bar, usually they have like video or they have like sports on the TV or ESPN or whatever. Oh, yeah. This, it's like every TV is just a different live Twitch stream. That's fire. And there's like board games. I'm about to pull up to that. So me and my wife went in there to drink once and I was like, yo, is this live? He's like, yeah, every TV is a different guy playing, right? I'm like, this fucking lit. That's crazy. Hey, we got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our partners at Odd Socks, our presenting sponsor here at the Bootleg Hit Podcast. Listen, Christmas time is approaching faster than you think. I mean, we're like fucking a month and a half away or some shit, whatever. Uh, get some odd socks for your folks. Go to oddsocksofficial.com, use the promo code bootleg, and you'll save 20% off at checkout. The most comfortable socks in the world. That's right. We got some Scarface socks. They got WWE. You know what I mean? They also got the Cheech and Chongs. 
They also got the flaming Hots for you hot shit eating fucks out there. My favorite, just the Odd Socks Basics. They're just so comfy. Literally the most comfortable sock in the world. I'm holding the fucking sock right now. You can save 20% off. Plus, they got boxers now, baby. All right. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Promo code bootleg at checkout. Save 20% off and support our family at Odd Socks and the podcast at the same fucking time. Let's get back to the interview. Yo, T Grizzly kind of revolutionizing the whole fucking Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. You ever watch him with his role yeah. playing thing? Yeah. I watched him a couple of times. I'd be I'd be tuning in. Would you ever do the role playing thing? I would. Um Cause Maybe. you can't break character or they <clears throat> kill you. No, nah, I understand. I'm probably wait I'll probably wait to the next GTA to do some some role play. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that GTA five has like a long lifespan. But uh yeah. I would do that. So when you like watch Apex guys play, are you like you're just like you're entertained by it or you're like trying to pick up on I'm, like I'm, yeah, technique? That and I'm also entertained just like people like Daltouche, like you just keep you entertained the whole time. He's talking so, shit. Funny, funny, funny guy, you know what I mean? A lot of energy. You know? Are, are you uh cause you've kind of chilled out a little bit on Twitch in terms of playing, right? Yeah, I've been focused on the album. Yeah. You know? Um you, but I'm back to it for the holidays. I'm about to finish up here. I'm in the studio locked in. Uh, I'm trying to get it done so I can get back to you, gaming. You are a big gamer. What would you say, since you already answered the R&B question for someone else, My give mouth. me your top five video games. Top five video games? All time. Of all time? Any console. Um, Grand Theft Auto. Like, I can't pick one specific title. I just got to say Grand Theft Auto. <clears throat> Grand Theft Auto is a franchise. Um, the first two. Apex right. Legends. Okay, Apex Legends. Um, I mean... As much as I hate to say it, you know, Call of Duty, you know, you just got to honor, you know, Call of Duty, you know, yeah. everybody knows what Call of Duty is. I can never get into like 2K or anything like that, but uh, man, Far Cry 3, um, Smash Bros. Smash Bros. for sure. Yeah. Smash Bros. And Metal Mario Gear Kart. Metal Gear Solid, huh? Metal Gear Solid? Uh, that was a PlayStation game, right? PlayStation, right? You never, I never played, played Metal Gear Solid. I really know. With you Snake. Were, were you like a Nintendo guy? I know the characters. Uh, no, yeah, I was a Nintendo guy. Yeah. yeah. Sega. You ever had the Dreamcast? Um, yeah, no, I never owned the Dreamcast, but I played it before. I played a couple Sonic games or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was straight. So no Super Mario. Yeah, yeah no I played Zelda? Super. Yeah, I played Super Mario. I played Zelda on the Switch. Yeah, Ocarina of Time on Nintendo sixty four. That's the one. Yeah, that was a the good. Sixty four one's the one. But there the was two of... on this, on this, but the Ocarina of Time was that. Yeah, that one was good. Was I think that, that was boy. the gold cartridge. Yep. Yeah. That well. shit, and then my favorite uh, Mario is Mario sixty four. Even though I know yeah, like, everyone good. likes the one on Super Nintendo the most, but I think Mario sixty four was crazy. No, I love that one too. That was one I got the most memories with for sure. It was but, like uh, three and Golden Eye on sixty four was fucking. Oh yeah, it's shit. classic as well. Yeah, classic. you get that gold gun. Yep. Fucking them one hitters. It's been a minute. I played it recently. It wasn't as. as it, yeah, it didn't though. age well. well did, you know, they tried to bring it back. I think like uh, a couple of consoles ago. And I sought it out and I played it and I was like, fuck, this shit was not that tight. <laughs> it was it was that shit and it was um do you remember they came out with a game called Perfect Dark? I remember Perfect Dark, yeah. And Perfect Dark was kind of like uh, the same type of maps as Goldeneye, but like in this like other world. Like sci-fi and like yeah, yeah, and yeah, those games did not age the best because now you have Call of Duty. But if they did like a Goldeneye, like but just use the whole Call of Duty engine, it could be fire. But those guns Could were like be. super. It was like you had a Beretta, an AK. Like these guns on these games now these days are fucking insane. Yeah, Goldeneye feels more like a party game to me now these days. It's not really a game. Like everyone's hanging like, out, getting everybody's drunk. hanging out, Yo, chill, yeah, vibing. Yeah, let's throw on it's a. Not, I got a sixty four. We could hook up. It's not competitive at all. We I'm sure play, there was some competitiveness. We could play. What was that one? Crash, ba Crash, not no no Crash Bandicoot's on PlayStation. What was the uh, Banjo? Ban what was the, the Banjo and Kazooie? Yes, with the yeah. bear. Yeah, that shit was. I used to play that a lot too. You ever played Glover Man? No. Oh, but man. What about Earthworm Jim? Yes, of course. Okay. And All right, so you a gamer. The no. South Park game on yeah. 64. Not the one where you, that where was you throw crazy. the piss? Yeah, the pissy snowballs, right? That shit was so fire. Yeah, I love that game. And uh, they didn't bring that back for sure. Nitro. The NWO versus sure. WCW wrestling. Oh, okay. Game. Yeah, that's classic. Yeah. yeah. I, say. 64 I was more heat. into No Mercy. That was a no black Mercy cartridge. No Mercy was amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, 64 had some heat. It's crazy because there was like two, like when I was a kid, I didn't own a 64, but my best friend had one. I had the PlayStation. So I'd like the best of both worlds. So when he comes to spend the night, bring the 64 over, we get it popping. I would have like Metal Gear Solid and, you know, fucking Twisted Metal and all that fucking Twisted shit. Twisted Metal Classic. Great game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, um, new music coming soon. The single's out right now. Uh, the Sorry. Diddy single's going crazy. Uh, hopefully, we'll get the album in the next three or four months. 
Yes, sir. Um, Putting them samples. Please. Are you? Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of samples on the album. No, not that many. Just, just enough. Yeah. Um. Them. Anything else that you got going on? You want to plug? Nah, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go f- subscribe on your Twitch. Yeah, go subscribe to Twitch. Godzilla, G A W D T I L L A. And then also, you know, you should probably try to get some sort of like a partnership with these Apex fucks. You've been, you love the game so much. We we work, yeah. We they let me to play test all the time. What is that? EA Sports. Um, Respawn and EA. Respawn. But they let me play. They let me play test New Legends. Like really, three seasons out. Oh, so you're yeah. already tapped in. All that, yeah. yeah. I'm tapped in. Yeah, yeah. I think you might be the biggest Apex fan in in music. Absolutely. Because everybody else who comes up here, Post all... Malone, think he might be a bigger Apex fan than me, Post, but he's not. Who's better? And he, I'm better. What? You guys play each other? Uh, no, nah, I never played him. But he don't want it. He don't want it with me. Post you, Malone, you don't want it with me, brother. We get a challenge going. Absolutely. Because you know he'll fuck you Let's up. Let's get beer in the pong. range. Yeah, I don't drink beer though. That's what. Uh, yeah, <laughs> beers for who? For what? Huh? Nah, I, ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. Just say it. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah, you stick the beer pong. Beers for? Huh? Hey, it's for, it's for Post Malone. It ain't for Bryson Tiller. Mm, no beer at all. I don't drink beer. What about a seltzer? I don't even like seltzers. You won't drink a White Claw? Oh. Okay, if I have a White Claw and a Corona next to each other. And I had to pick? Which one are you picking up? I'd probably pick up the Corona just because, you know, they got more history in this world. <laughs> what are we talking about? I, I don't yes. know. <laughs> For historical purposes, I'm going to yeah. pick up the Corona. Like, Yo, respect, respect Corona with White Claw now. Nah, See, bro. I drink White Claw and people say it's because I'm like, it's like, like yo, I'm a bitch. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Like, yo, you're a bitch. That's a bitch drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, drink some real shit. And I'm uh, like, nah, okay. bro, I'm trying to work on my figure. It's only 100 <laughs> calories. It's 100 calories. There's no sugar in there. You know what I mean? No yeah. carbs. Yeah. You drink a Corona, it's like 230 calories. You know what I mean? Anyway, we'll look. Yeah. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Absolutely, bro. Bryson Tiller, my guy. Look forward to the new music. Much love. Boom.